It was a hand, a doll-like hand. White fingers gently unwrapped one by one in an uncoordinated childlike manner. She could feel a warm breath touch the back of her neck. Someone was standing behind her. As soon as she turned around, she was face to face with suspect number four. And Ashley had pulled her head back so intensely that her neck cracked. Just cracked open. Hello, my name is Nicole and welcome to Crispy Crispy the podcast where we serve piping hot stories of any and all things crime that we pair with a different drink every episode. Now, in today's episode, wala si Alison. Wala si sister ngayon, unfortunately, but she did manage to make me a DIY cup of white mocha. And we're just gonna skip the coffee rating part of this segment and jump straight into the story. Now, today's story. Today's story is about a fictional book, nisha totoo, called No Exit by Taylor Adams. I heard bits and pieces of this story before and I was going through a video on YouTube who, that was recommending thriller books. And when they explained the plot of No Exit, I became parang familiar, parang familiar. So I went back, read the whole book, actually listened to the audiobook. I highly, highly recommend the audiobook if you want to listen to the story or hear about the story. Because the chef, the chef, the narrator is chef's kiss. Okay, so back to the story. By the way, if you are watching this on YouTube, nakatingin lang ako dito sa right kasi my notes are here and I don't want to miss any details for you guys, okay? We gotta get everything. We gotta get everything in this story. So our story begins the day before Christmas Eve, December 23rd, 7.39 p.m. So we're introduced to a girl named Darby. Darby was a college freshman who was currently driving her little blue Honda Civic. She was struggling, struggling to plow through the snowed up road. She could barely see the yellow markers on the road anymore and her car was barely surviving. The entire drive had been like this, just a white, blurry vision. And at this point, Darby was fueled by Red Bull because she couldn't stop. She didn't have time to stop because earlier that day, she had just gotten a text from her sister telling her that their mom was going into surgery. Her mom had pancreatic cancer. Now, the moment she read this, Darby, she grabbed her keys, she raced to her car, and in the panic of it all, she managed to leave her phone charger in her dorm room. She left it behind. So she looked at her phone. 9% battery. Great. Now her phone was as good as dead, and to make things even better, her car's left windshield just broke off before she managed to swerve off the road because of the icy road, right? But luckily for her, she managed to find a dingy little stop nearby, a rest stop nearby, and she parked herself next to a van in the parking lot and went inside. Now this, this was the worst snowstorm in Colorado, so signal, cell phone signal was non-existent. So the next best thing, was Wi-Fi. Darby needed Wi-Fi. So she stepped into the little rest stop and she asked the first person she saw if there was. He was just some old dude in his late 50s and he had one earring on and a silver goatee. When she asked him if there was Wi-Fi, he pointed to the sign on the wall. It said, Wi-Fi, $3.95 for 10 minutes. Now, mahal to, okay? Mahal to for 10 minutes of Wi-Fi. But Darby paid anyway because her mother was currently going into surgery and she needed to contact her sister. And so she bought the Wi-Fi and scrolled through her phone and she's scrolling and scrolling, waiting for the signal to pop up, but nothing. Her phone couldn't connect to the Wi-Fi either. And then suddenly, someone from behind her said, I got a signal outside. She heard someone say from behind her and there was a person standing by the door and she was wondering, but But anyway, this guy, he looked to be about her age, leaning against the front door. She'd completely walked past him. And then when she asked him, you know, Saan? he led her outside to uh, where there was a statue at the entrance of the vicinity ng rest stop. So when you enter with your car, it's what I imagine to be like a small rotonda. And then after that rotonda, you go through the parking lot and then you reach the rest stop. So they walked out, super cold. They went to the statues and he said, there's a specific spot dito. Just a specific, specific spot that you have to stand in so you can get just one bar. One bar lang makukuha mag girl. And siguro, one text lang send mo. But you know, Darby said, yeah, one is better than nothing. So let's go, guy. And as they walk through the snow to that spot, we learn that this guy's name is Ashley. Yes, it sounds like a girl's name, but that's his name, Ashley. We also learn that the guy that she first saw when she entered the restroom, his name was Ed. So at this time, Ashley had left her to find signal and she had her arms stretched out to the sky holding her phone. She was looking at the corner of her phone waiting for a signal to appear, but nothing. At this point, her battery life had gone down to 6%. So Darby's teeth, 
nanginginig na dyan sa labas, kakahintay kaka, ng signal. And she was like, she had lost all hope na. Kasi she was in Colorado. Her family was in Utah. There was still miles to go before she could reach her mom and be there for her during her surgery. And so she was like, ano ba to? Ano na gagawin ko? And so she was walking back towards the rest stop again. She had to pass the parking lot. And she found herself absentmindedly counting the cars in the parking lot. So there was a red truck There was one unidentified truck, unidentified because there was snow on top of it and she couldn't make out the model. And then next to that, it was her car, the Honda Civic. And then next to the Honda Civic was a gray van. And so she was just mindlessly on autopilot walking around in the snow. And she she passed by the parking lot. She passed by the red truck. And then the next one, she passed by the buried car. The next one, she passed by her car, the Honda Civic. And then she passed by the gray van. And now this gray van, the back of this gray van had two rear windows. It was called an Astro. Yun yung model daw ng car. And so the left rear window was covered by a towel. And the right one, um, wala. You could see through it, but not necessarily kasi padilim na, so it was pretty dark. But then, as she was walking past the rear window, some light got reflected from the lampposts and she got a glimpse of something pale, something white. It was a hand, a doll-like hand, white fingers, gently unwrapped one by one in an uncoordinated childlike manner. The fingers were gripping some sort of metal material, so, sort of like a cage. And just as quickly as she saw it, it disappeared back into the darkness. No freaking way. Darby cupped her hands on the window, but she could barely see anything inside. It was all darkness, except... Was, was that a lock? Latched onto some metal bars? Like, like some sort of dog cage? Darby stepped away. She inhaled, trying to keep her composure. Then she exhaled. There was a child locked inside this van. It's 17 p.m. Darby went back inside the building. Now, the inside of this building wasn't much to look at. It was basically just a big rectangle, and there was a giant map of Colorado on one wall, a large window with the view of the parking lot on the other. But some of that window, 50% of it was covered in snow, so you could only see half through that window. And then there were some chairs and tables in the middle of the room, and there was a beverage counter that offered free cocoa and coffee, C-O-F-E-E. So whoever wrote down coffee had to be fired na kasi grabe. Spelling nila ng coffee, hindi pa matama. Uh, the guy that we now know is named Ashley. He was playing cards with Ed, and so Ashley saw Darby walk in, and he asked, any luck on finding any Wi-Fi or uh, signal? And Darby. Maring Darby natin, masyadong busy. Masyado siyang busy. Ina-absorb niya pa yung nangyari sa labas, and so she didn't answer. She was still busy also tallying the three possible suspects who were in front of her. Ashley, Ed, and now a new older lady who looked to be Ed's wife. She had just exited the bathroom when Darby entered. But the math, the math wasn't mathing, guys. The math wasn't mathing. There were three cars outside apart from hers. Three suspects in here. But Ed and his wife, they most probably already traveled together, right? So they had, they had to take one car. So... There had to be a fourth person at the rest stop, but who? Who was it? At that exact moment, a chill raced down Darby's spine, hair sprinkling her skin. She stood still. She could feel a warm breath touch the back of her neck. Someone was standing behind her. Darby tried to turn around as casually as she could, just pretending to reach for the door para masara niya. But as soon as she turned around, she was face to face with suspect number four. He was tall and thin, but slouching. His face was decorated with acne and had a shapeless chin and peach fuzz whiskers. So really, in Darby's mind, he looked like a rat. So we're gonna call him Rat Face. Rat Man. Rat Face. Na lang, sige, Rat Face. Rat Face suddenly lifted his arm and Darby flinched, but he was just reaching for the door to close it as well. So she was the first to break eye contact and so she, she scurried back into uh, the room with the others and so she took a seat. But Darby knew that he was still watching her as she took her seat and so she whipped her phone out, pretended to keep finding signal. She was playing the part. She was an actor. And then he was lingering by the door, just standing there, keeping guard, his eyes fixed on Darby. So now we can only imagine what's going on in Darby's mind at this point. She had just found a child. Not really, because she just saw what she thought was a hand. So she wondered if she was going crazy from all the Red Bull she had. Or was it from lack of sleep? Or was she just overreacting? Speaking of overreacting, she had already tried to call 911 before coming inside. So still no signal, but she even tried sending a text just in case. You know, she sent a text at the magic spot Ashley had told her. 
but nothing. The text read, Child Abduction, Gray Van, License Plate VBH 9045, State Route 7, Wanapa Rest Stop, Send Police. But then next to it, it read, Unable to Send. So, no signal. A few minutes of people watching inside the rest stop and Darby was able to find out Ed's wife's name. Her name was Sandy. They were a nice looking couple, but they didn't really look like they got along well. And Ashley. Ashley was a bubbly social butterfly that just wouldn't shut up. He was starting to get annoying. But then there was something about him. Something about him that hindi ma, ma pinpoint ni Darby. He looked like he just felt fake for some reason. Para daw siyang store clerk sa store who fake smiles at customers. But then once the customers are gone, he talks crap about them when they leave. So parang ganun daw yung vibe niya. But who knows? And then Ratface. Ratface just screamed child abductor. As far as Darby knew, everyone here inside this rest stop was guilty until proven innocent. So the first step of Darby's plan was to match every vehicle to their owner. She couldn't just openly ask them kasi pag tinanong niya, edi siyempre, the kidnapper would realize that she was onto them. No, she had to approach the situation gently, carefully. She had to act cool. Just then, an announcement on the rest stop's old radio broadcasted the current situation outside. It announced that there was a winter storm in the blizzard conditions and there was going to be extreme precipitation. State Route 7 closed to all traffic between exits 49 and 68 until further notice. For emergency and road maintenance crews, expect significant delays of 6 to 8 hours due to multiple collisions and heavy snowfall. All motorists are advised to stay off the road and remain indoors until conditions improve. Six to eight freaking hours before any help would get here. Six to eight hours of being trapped together with a child abductor. Better get comfy. Sabi ni Sandy. Sabi ni Maring Sandy. And then out of nowhere, see Ratface, he suddenly decided to speak up. Sabi niya, my, my name is Lars. Everyone froze and stared at the weird boy. This weird boy pala, he looked about 19, but he acted younger than he was, which is kind of weird. Never really stated that he had something wrong in his mental, you know, th- that that's the gist. So you could feel the awkwardness in the room, and he said, you know, since we'll be here all night, better make introductions. So, hello, my name is Lars. So one awkward introduction later, Darby was sitting on the couch with some coffee in hand and thinking of all the possible scenarios that could happen tonight. And involving anyone else would be her last resort because it was like pulling the pin off a grenade. You know, touch, move, and you can go back anymore. She had to think carefully about this. She had the element of surprise in her hand and she couldn't waste it. Darby thought of telling Ashley because he was the most, he's the youngest and also the most physically capable among the group. And then she also imagined Lars pulling out a gun because they noticed niya yung usapan nila dalawa. And so they would get killed. And then Ed and Sandy would be killed because they would be witnesses. All because Darby couldn't keep her mouth shut. So all of these scenarios were going through her mind. But then the thought came up, what if Darby was wrong? But if she just imagined it all, there was no child. I mean, her body was basically pumping Red Bull instead of blood right now. She was practically driving the whole day, no rest, and she barely had enough sleep. Darby Darby needed to go back. She needed to go back to that van. She needed to see that child again. Really see that child. And so she glanced around the room and she checked that Ed and Ashley were still playing cards. Sandy had her book. And then Lars, rat face, was still guarding the freaking door. But. He was chugging his third cup of cocoa. And our girl Darby knew that sooner or later he would be going to the restroom. And that's when Darby would strike. Now, 15 minutes go by and Lars stood up. He went to the restroom and see Darby. Darby sprung up to her feet before she went to the exit. Before she exited the building. Ang maria natin si Darby. Hindi ko alam ko ano pong pasok sa isip niya now. But she went straight for the beverage counter and got a cup of cocoa. She didn't even like cocoa. But you know who did like cocoa? Kids. Kids like cocoa, right? And then suddenly Darby heard the bathroom CR make a flush, and so she she just bolted out the door. So now we have Darby playing the part of the girl without cell signal because again she couldn't make a run for the van. That'd be suspicious. The window of the rest stop had a view of the parking lot, so she had to keep that in mind. And so she had to assume that Lars was watching her from the window of the building. Plus she was leaving tracks on the snow. Every move she would make tonight would leave tracks on the snow, would leave footprints. So she circled around the statue that Ashley said had the magic spot. And then she looped back around the rest stop. So she was walking, just taking her time, buying more time. And then she made it at the back of the building and she noticed that the vicinity of the rest stop was on top of a cliff, basically. And if you pass the cliff, it was just a wall of forest, a wall of trees. 
And she also noticed that behind the rest stop, uh, there was a bunch of picnic tables and chairs scattered. There were some that were stacked against the wall. And at that wall, she noticed that there were two windows, one for each restroom. And so she took that into account before she made it back to the front of the building again because she was going in a circle. Eh. But before she made it to the parking lot, every step she took, she was trying to still send a text because baka, baka may mag pull through na text to the police, right? Her battery was now 4%. So Darby, she approached the parking lot, she approached the van from the left side using the length of the van as a cover. And then she plopped up the cup of cocoa down before tapping on the glass of the van. Sabi niya, hey, no answer. Hey, is anyone in there? Nothing. And then parang nang, na, ano na siya, nagka-panic mode na nagagalit na siya na parang, talaga bang sinayon ko yung oras ko para dito? So nagigigil na siya, sabi niya, listen up, girl. Girl, if anyone is trapped in there, make a noise right now or I'm leaving. This is your last chance. But still, no answer. And so she let out a sigh of relief. And she did She did imagine it after all. Suddenly, the people inside the building weren't looking too bad. I mean, yeah, Lars, Lars was still creepy. But there were a lot of creepy men that existed. But most of them were harmless. But just, just to be sure, just to be 101% sure, Darby used the light on her cell phone, her low button cell phone, to peek into the dark back of the van. And so she just had to confirm. She just had to prove to herself that there was nothing. And then Darby saw it. She saw a little girl's face staring back at her. Darby dropped her phone and it landed on her shoe sideways, having the flashlight directly facing the visitor center like a lighthouse. So, yung flashlight niya nakatapat na sa bintana. And so, she dove down, got her phone, and then covered it with her hands. Oh my freaking God. It's real. There is an actual child trapped inside a person's van. And it was a quick glimpse, but Darby saw it. The girl's mouth was covered with tape and she was stuffed inside a dog crate. Darby reached for the door handles, but it was locked. Shempre, it was locked. She couldn't break the windows because then it would alarm and that would be too loud. So instead, she took one of her shoelaces and then she tied a loop on one of the end and then managed to slip it inside the driver's window. And so she slipped it inside and then she lassoed that loop, the loop end, on the lock and it clicked open. So this was this car, this Astro model, medyo old siya, so yung lock niya is going up and down instead of sideways. So she managed to loop it and it clicked open. Darby grabbed the door handle and it yanked open and to her horror, the dome light turned on. Now a dome light is, di ba ba, pag pinukasan mo yung kotse, may ilaw na light sa tuktok ng sa ceiling, that's the dome light and it turned on. So she scrambled to turn it off and then she checked, she quickly checked to see if there was any any movement from inside the building window nothing okay okay safe and then darby darby reached for the interior locks and then unlocked the rear doors she was hoping to find some kind of weapon inside sahara maybe even a gun but nothing it was just filled with wrappers and garbage and discarded stuff so darby she ran back to the helicopter and then she opened the door and she was greeted with the smell of urine the girl had tape looped around her head and over her mouth. So, ganun kagrabi yung tindi ng tape sa buwangan ng bata. And then, her hands were gripping the cage like she was like uh, in jail, in a jail cell. And Darby said, uh, Hi, uh, are you okay? Sabi niya sa bata. And then, the bata said, No, actually, the bata couldn't say anything because she had tape. And sabi ni Darby, oh, Okay, I'm gonna take off the tape, okay? It might hurt. And then, the bata, she was nodding. Darby ripped the tape off and then she said, um, What's your name? Jay? Is Jay short for something? Jaybird? Uh, Jaybird, do you know the man who drives this van? No. Did he take you? Yeah. F- from your house? And then Darby inulit niya yung tanong niya sa mga, Wait, okay, Jay. Where do you live? San Diego. They were in Colorado. San Diego, California was a hot place. Colorado was the worst s- snowstorm they were experiencing. So ganong kang garabi yung distance and yung, yung juxtaposition ng weather. So... Darby noticed one of Jay's hands gripping at the bar and it was wrapped and sealed with electric tape. And sabi niya, did, did he hurt you? Sabi niya, yeah. What did he do to your hand, Jay? It's a yellow card. Now, okay, wala akong alam sa sports, but I know that this is technically a sports term, so sinerch ko. Basically, if you don't know, a yellow card is a term and an actual physical card used in soccer and it's given to a player as a sort of caution or a warning. So this was the psycho Darby was going to be dealing with. And so Darby was like, this mm, an effer is a psycho. But then suddenly, Jay froze. Footsteps coming fast. They both heard the crunching of ice from outside. So Darby had to decide at that moment whether she was going to run or she was going to hide. What do you think she chose? 
Tabby chose to hide. She tugged on the car door, but it shut on the towel that was blocking the right rear window. And then the footsteps, they were much closer now. And then she tugged on the towel again, and finally, the door clicked shut. Darby dropped to the floor and hid under one of the blankets that was on the side of the van. She tried to control her breathing, but from inside the van, she could hear. Ratface was circling the vehicle. He could hear his mouth breathing. The <sighs> I don't understand why he was breathing that way, but every time she knew he was close, she could hear the mouth breathing. And then finally... He opened the driver door. Lars turned on the engine and then opened the heater. At this moment, Jay was now quietly rewrapping the tape around her mouth. Darby thought, what a smart girl. And then after a few minutes, Lars turned around towards the back of the vehicle and Darby could swear he was looking right at her. But then sabi ni Lars, nice and warm, huh, Jaybird? Darby continued to inspect the contents of the van and she noticed that there were five gallons of gasoline and bleach. Materials to clean up the crime scene, maybe? Once Lars was done heating up the van so that the little girl he kidnapped didn't die in the snowy weather, he slipped out of the car and then Darby got to work and snapped some photos of Jay to keep as evidence. Jay extended out an arm towards Darby and Darby thought, Ano ba ito? Bakit, bakit gusto makapag-shake hands ng batang to sa akin? But then suddenly, Jay dropped something on Darby's palm. It was a bullet that Jay had found on the van floor. Of course Lars had a gun. She should have guessed. Jay, I promise you, I will get you out of here, okay? I will save you. And with that, Darby left the little girl in the gray van and retreated back into the visitor center. She chose a specific spot inside where she was able to see the entire room. She was able to grab some pen and paper because her car and the van was magkatabi lang naman. And so to, her, to the best of her ability, she was now sketching. Lars is stupid red face. Darby hoped that this would be of some help to the cops once they arrived, but then even if she was able to call the cops first thing tomorrow morning, Lars would have already hopped into his car, taken Jay, and left. And by the time the cops did arrive, Lars would have already had enough time to make his escape. So that option was just a sure death sentence to Jay. So no, 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 no. Darby needed to take action on her own. Here, tonight, before the snowplows arrived, she needed to stop Lars herself. So as Darby was thinking all of this, the two other men who were playing cards before had now shifted to Ashley performing a couple of card tricks for Ed. So sabi ni Ed, kaya ka pala nananalo lagi kasi ganun kabilis yung kamay mo with the card tricks he was doing. And then sabi ni Ashley, don't worry Ed, I beat you fair and square and not to toot my own horn. But yes, I did win a silver at a magic competition once. Sabi ni Ed, that's a thing. Of course it's a thing. And then oddly enough, Lars, Ratface, suddenly joined the conversation. Sabi niya, so then were the, were the magic tricks real? There was a short pause before Ashley glanced at Ed and smirked. Darby knew where this was going. Yeah, Ashley answered. And it was pretty obvious he was just doing this to tease Lars with his sarcasm. But it was painfully more obvious that Lars had no idea. And Darby was just waiting. She was gripping the seat, waiting for Lars to explode. Kasi parang inaasar lang siya. Tapos hindi naman alam ni Ashley na he's a, a child abductor. So it was a tense moment for Darby. And so sabi ni Lars, Really? Absolutely! I can bend time and space, pull surprises out of my sleeves, make people misremember. I can cheat Death. I can dodge bullets, man. I'm a magic man, Lars, my brother. And I... Do you know how to cut a girl in half? The room went quiet. Darby quickly went back to her sketch pad and pretended to doodle, but then she realized Lars was staring right at her. Do you know how to cut a girl in half? Lars asked again, eagerly this time. His eyes were still pinned on Darby. You know, you, you put her in a wooden box like a coffin and then you, 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 you cut it with a saw. Ed stared down at the floor and Sandy lowered her book. Can you cut a girl in? I can, Sabini Ashley. But you only win gold if she survives. See, I got silver, Sabini Ashley. Not gold. So Ashley was making a joke and then Ed forced a laugh. Everyone else followed. And Lars, Lars looked like kinailangan niyang i-process yung joke muna bago siya nakitawa. And then Darby noticed a weird thing about Lars. Kasi usually people blink when they laugh, but Lars didn't. His face laughed, but then his eyes watched. That was the stupid grinning face of evil. So it had now been a couple of minutes after that card trick incident, and Darby at this point had now already memorized the floor plan of the building. Now she was thinking of a way to get rid of Lars. And what did she need? Weapons. Darby needed weapons. The coffee bar had plastic spoons, forks, plates, and napkins. No steak knives, no flare guns, 
Basically nothing useful. The best bet she had was a Swiss army knife her dad had given her as a graduation gift. Now, she couldn't exactly kill Lars with this because it's 2 inch lang yung blade. Niya. She ha- if she wanted to, she had to be able to catch him off guard to do the most damage. Now, that was a plan, but it wasn't the best plan. But then she remembered the crack mortar underneath the coffee counter. And so she approached the coffee table and then applied some pressure on the wobbly stone. And then she was able to hide the sound of the stone cracking by the sound of the coffee machine. So, ayun, nahulog din bato sa floor. And then no one had noticed when Darby bent down to pick the hockey puck-sized stone off the ground. It was large enough, apparently, to bash a person's teeth out. So just to recap what Darby had already, she had a two-inch knife, a medium-sized rock, and a bullet. She, Darby, our girl, our girl was gonna need some help. And so Darby decided that her next plan was gonna be Ashley. Ashley was in the middle of teaching everyone a new game to play to pass the time because they, they were gonna be there a while. So he said we could play Circle Time. And Circle Time was an icebreaker he usually did uh, when he was younger with, in school. Kids would be seated in a circle like they were all right now and they all should agree on a topic to talk about. The topic the group chose, well, more, more like Ashley chose, was phobias, your fears, your worst fears. Ashley went first to get the game started. And then now we find out that he had a fear of door hinges. When he was seven years old, he was exploring an old mine shaft and his thumb got caught on one of the rusty door hinges. So the door swung shut and then he was stuck there for two days without food or water. But then, luckily, there were a couple of teenagers that found him that next day and he was able to keep his thumb but ever since then, dun na, dun na nag ano paranoia and fear niya sa door hinges, which is a weird fear, but yeah, that's what we learn. Now, as Ashley was telling his story, Darby had walked towards him and then walked past him, and she managed to discreetly pass him a note. It read, meet me in the restroom, I have something to tell you. So she passed Ashley and she stopped by the window and waited for Ashley who just casually approached her from behind. He was able to smoothly slip her back the note and he did it so naturally, like really like a magic man. And Darby didn't even notice initially. The note read back, I have a girlfriend. Darby mouthed the words, that's not what I meant. Sabi ni Ashley, what? And then at this point, the two of them were looking very suspicious, whispering around the window. And Darby could tell that everyone in the room had their eyes on her, on them. And so she, she took a quick glance at Lars. And what she saw made her heart drop. Lars was looking at them, but that was not the reason she was panicked. Lars had placed an item on one of the brochure racks that was next to him. It was a styrofoam cup. Her cup. The stupid cup she filled with cocoa and carried outside and left by his van. He knows, even worse, he was planning to attack her the same way she was planning to attack him. 11.09 p.m. Darby had Ashley follow her into the men's restroom. She told him everything. The van, the cage, the girl named Jay from San Diego. So, said Ashley, so we have to do something. Do you mean kill him? If it comes to that... Right now? With what? And then Darby opened her two-inch Swiss army blade and that was Ashley said, Girl, he's gonna have a gun, you know? Yes, I know. So, what's your plan? We have to stop him. Girl, given a yon. So, that, that's not the plan. What's the plan? That's why I'm telling you. And guess what? Ashley, you're involved now. There's a child abductor in the next room and a little girl locked inside his stupid van. And that's the hand we've been dealt with. So, I'm asking you now. Will you help me? You're... You're sure Lars kidnapped her? Positive. I need proof. I, you, I, can you prove any of this? So Darby thumbed through the photo gallery on her iPhone, but then behind her, the restroom door banged open. It was Lars. And just like that, the kidnapper was inside the room with them, breathing the same air. Darby's mind screamed. But Ashley, Ashley had grabbed her face and smashed her mouth into his. Medyo nagloading lang si Maring Darby, pero she understood what was happening. She understood. So now, there was awkward kissing. There was awkward groping. And during all this, Lars was just there watching them like a creeper. And Darby and Ashley, they just kept going. They were actors at this moment. They kept going until Darby, she heard the sink turn on, a sink turn off, and then a paper towel being crumpled, and then silence. Lars had left them in the CR. So they continued their conversation. But it was obvious that they were not there Lars para lang mak- mak- CR, no? He was there to check up on Darby. So that they continued their conversation. Darby showed Ashley the picture of Jay th- and that sealed the deal. So they were now forming a plan. Now they both knew that Darby's knife really wouldn't do much. So Darby asked Ashley to take off his sock, 
Darby got his sock, put the rock inside that sock, and she called it a rock and a sock. She was swinging it. That was a new weapon they had now. And so Darby began discussing the plan. So here's my idea, sabi niya kay Ashley. Lars likes to stand by the front door and monitor the exit, right? Right. One of us, person A, will walk past him through the doors outside, towards his van. He's on to us now, so he'll follow person A. He'll have to. And to do this, he'll go through the door, turning his back to person B. She was smacking the rock in a sock in her palm. Diba? And then, person B, who is stronger than person A, will come up behind Lars and whack him in the back of the skull. One good swing is all it should take to knock him out cold. But if it doesn't, person A, who has the knife, will turn around and we'll both go for Lars. So now that the plan was settled, they both exited the bathroom at the same time, and it turns out that had been the wrong move. Darby's cheeks were turning red, and she knew she looked visibly distressed. Because she's the panic, the child in the van, Lars just saw them. But the panic that she was, you know, that was obvious on her, it might have just fit the bizarre scene. Two strangers having a quickie in the filthiest bathroom in Colorado. Ed and Sandy had probably noticed, and they had drawn their own conclusions. But, you know, yeah, what are you gonna do? She didn't have time to think about that. She was carrying the Swiss knife concealed against her wrist as she sat down and waited for Ashley's signal. So they, they discussed the signal that Ashley was going to do. When Ashley was ready, he would cough once. But he was taking too long. Darby's nerves were getting the best of her and watching Ashley wavering at the same time did not help at all. He looked like he had just witnessed a murder, and a murder hadn't even happened yet. Now, luckily, Ed had spoken up, and he was saying something about his phobia naman. He was continuing the game kanina, the circle game. So he said his worst fear was Christmas with his relatives, and it looked like the last words he said about his fear was just the motivation Ashley needed. He said, doing the right thing is hard. Taking yourself out is easy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Ashley nodded and then looked at, Dor- at Darby. More than you know. And then, slowly, he raised his his fists towards his mouth. And then, he coughed once. And so Darby stood up, staring Lars in his eyes before exiting the door, knife in hand. 11.55pm. Lars didn't follow her. Something had gone wrong. She had a choice now, either to go back inside or walk towards their van. So, she chose the van. She made her way over, opened the rear door which she had left unlocked, and then whispered to Jay, Hey! Darby reached into her pocket to turn on the flashlight para makita niya yung nangyari sa loob, but it wasn't there. She had left her phone in her purse, and her purse was in the men's bathroom. Stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. But she couldn't show Jay. She was completely panicking inside. Sabi niya, alright Jay, listen, I'm going to help you, okay? And, and to help you, I need you to help me, okay? Okay, sabi ni Jay, I need you to try and remember. The bad man, can, can you describe the gun he's carrying? It's little. Black, he, he keeps it in his pocket. Of course. She leaned and checked the building's front door again. Still closed. Still no sign of Ashley. Still no sign of Lars. D- do you see him keep any knives in here? Any bats, machetes, any other guns? One other? Where, where? No, it, it's not a regular gun. Why? Is it bigger? It shoots nails. Nails! It shoots nails. Like a nail gun? Jay nodded. A freaking nail gun. And the nail gun is here, right? She asked. It's in the van with us? I think so. All right, where do you think Lars keeps his nail gun? Back here or in the front? The other one keeps it in an orange box. Keeps it where? It used to be back here, but I think they moved it. But Darby was not listening anymore. Jay's last sentence snagged in her brain and echoed, The other one keeps it in an orange box. The other one. The other one. Darby's legs felt like jelly and she staggered out the vehicle, her knees dropping to the icy ground. She could see the building's door was now open. Lars stood in the doorway and beside him, Ashley, the other one, the other one. So Lars had one of his hands inside his jacket, gripping his pistol, and and Ashley had the rock and the sock out. He was swinging it, walking towards her. So now it's 12.01 a.m. So now it was two versus one. Ashley obviously had lied to her about knowing Lars, about everything. He put his tongue in her mouth. He was so convincing that she believed it all. She told him everything. She gave him everything, even another weapon. You didn't tell me the two of them were together. I thought you knew. How could I know? Sorry. Why didn't you effing mention it? I'm sorry. Jay's voice broke and Darby ran towards the driver door and tried opening it again, but it was locked. Lars had locked it the last time he went to visit the van. And so now, 
bigla na rin naging himboses ni Lars from afar. Kasi they were walking towards her. Sabi niya, you, you asked my brother to kill me? Lars's voice called out, getting closer to Darby. Is that right? They were freaking brothers. He says you, uh, you asked him to bash, my, to bash my brains in. Darby scrambled back into the back of the van and handed Jay her Swiss knife. Use this, okay? Scraping motions to saw at the bars. He's coming. Keep cutting. You'll get out. Where are you gonna go? Darby didn't have time to answer. Darby slammed the door shut and ran. She needed to distract the two guys from uh, Jay as she tried to saw her way out of the cage. Why, why are you running? Hey, I just want to talk. I'm gonna catch you anyway, said Lars. My God. And so now, she heard the rattling of metal. The gun was in Lars's hand. But she knew Darby was a smart girl. She knew that it was just for intimidation. If Lars really did wanted her dead, he would have done it already. So now it was like a slow motion nightmare. They were they were trying to run in the deep snow. So can you just imagine how fast their pace was? And so Ashley stood at the front entrance, guarding the door so that Ashley that so that Darby couldn't get inside. So now they were just outside, and Darby couldn't get into her car because her keys were in her purse, and her purse was in the restroom. And so now, at the at the thought of the restroom, she remembered the men's restroom had a window at the back of the building so darby darby suddenly changed her direction and she raced towards the back of the building and she saw that there were picnic tables stacked up and so she climbed that it was icy it was slippery but she managed to do it and she jumped through the window just a swan dive through the window and then she grabbed her purse and she grabbed the phone and then she bolted out the restroom where ed and sandy were ed looked visibly confused because the last time she saw he saw uh, darby she had left through the entrance Sandy was sleeping with uh, her book on top of her face. So, and speaking of the front door, Ashley was there, just looking at Darby. And Darby, at that moment, she wanted to cry because she knew she knew she was just gonna die at, that night. And Dar- and um, Ashley, he looked to the middle of the room towards the tables. Parang para bang um, inuutos niya si Darby na puntahan yung gitna, mo pukadon ganon. So Darby, she slowly made her way towards the tables, and she saw a note. The note that they had exchanged earlier. The note they exchanged when she thought that Ashley was just a kind boy who wanted to help. And she opened the note and it said, If you tell them, either of them, I kill them both. And so si Ashley, si pare nating Ashley, he went inside just so casual na parang wala bang kidnapping na nagaganap. And he took a seat and then Darby was there not, and she was so sure that nothing would happen as long as Ed and Sandy were nearby. Because it was much more easier to take care of one homicide than three. And if they were witnesses, they'd have to be killing two more people. So, behind them, Ed was returning from the coffee counter. And he said, coffee's out. Ashley feigned horror. Okay, actor mode na naman to si Ashley. Sabi niya, what? No more coffee. Whatever shall we do? Sabi ni Ed, yeah, afraid so. Then, I guess we're gonna have to kill each other. Girl! And so, at that moment, the door opened. And in walks Lars. And then, he returned to his, his usual position of guarding the door. My God, ni ko alam, ba't walang nagtataka? Bakit nandun lang si Lars buong gabi? My gosh. Someone, raise some concerns. Raise some questions. So, there was a point at that evening. They continued their evening like nothing happened. And there was a point where everyone was in their same routine again. Ashley and Ed were playing cards. But then, aboard si Ashley and Ed. And Ashley suggested another game of Circle Time. And this time, instead of phobias and fears, they were going to be talking about their favorite movies and again ashley went first he said he loved monster movies like godzilla because the monsters were the true stars of the show and the human heroes <laughs> they were just the placeholders who didn't really have any real effect on the plot they could try you know they could try he was looking at darby when he was explaining this they could try they could try to stop the monsters but no matter what they do the monsters are always gonna get what they want See, the monsters, they're gonna fight and flatten sky- skyscrapers and smash bridges. And all you can do, he's looking at Darby, is get the hell out of their way or you are gonna get crushed. There was a moment of silence and then after that, I mean, nagyon, kunyari si Ashley, sabi niya, ah, and you know, I could really use some caffeine right now, some cafe. And then bigla naalala ni Ed, oh, oh, oh wait, I have some coffee beans in my truck. Let me go get them. Let me leave this room and leave you, Darby, and Lars, and a sleeping Sandy in this room. And so, umalis si Ed. Okay, naiwan na silang apat. Si Sandy, tulog pa. And at this moment, na iniisip na lang ni Darby na, my life is now in the hands of this sleeping woman and how deep her sleep is. And so, tinanggal na yung mask ni Ashley. Darby, pagod na ako mag-alokohan dito, okay? Let's get straight to the point. 
This is the deal, okay? I'm gonna say this once, just once. Let us go with the child, with Jay, and no one gets hurt. Okay, I'm not gonna hurt her. Is that what you're concerned about? I'm not gonna hurt her. Okay? And Darby was like, why do you have this girl in the first place? Is this is this a sex thing? Is Lars gonna rape her? And said to Ash, what? Sasa memang no kadiri hindi pera lang talaga habol namin pera lang okay hindi siya masasaktan iiwan naman yung bata somewhere out there kapag nakuha na naman yung pera niya and that's it no one no one needs to get hurt tonight everything can go smoothly and sabi ni Darby you're lying you already hurt her i saw her hand and so medyo na ano na si ano he was enjoying their banter but Darby didn't realize that he was getting closer to her na pala parang Darby 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 Darby, 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 Darby. Darby, just let us, okay? Nothing's gonna happen. This is I promise you, this is not a sex thing, okay? And by the way, your nose is bleeding. And then Darby checked her nose. And then Ashley, bigla niya lang hinila yung buhok ni Darby. And then banged her to the table. And so ngayon, nagising si Sandy sa, sa ingay, sa dabog. And then she's like, what happened? Oh, Darby, your nose is bleeding. My gosh. And then sabi ni Ashley, no, we're good here. It's okay, right, Darby? Darby was like, yeah, it's just the, the coldness, the weather, the extreme weather. Meh, meh, meh. And then... At that point, parang may John and si Sandy. Mas just suspicious na siya. And Darby noticed this. But she didn't see anything. Darby was like making eye contact with Sandy. And Ashley noticed this exchange. And he looked at Lars, giving him like a, like a faint signal. And sa utak ni Darby, oh my god, this is it. We're gonna die. We're both gonna die, me and Sandy. And before Lars could move, could get his pistol, Ed walks in. And medyo naiinis na si Darby kay Ed. Kasi sa sobrang tagal ni Ed sa labas, kukuha lang naman ng kape. Dumugo na ilong niya. So now, oh, sige, Ed is like fixing the, ta- the, the coffee counter. Like, okay, here's the beans and everything. Mm-hmm. And while everyone was like busy with the new coffee, balita na new coffee, everyone was going through the, co- the coffee counter, Darby tried to make her way over and pretended to make her way over, but then discreetly passed a note to Ashley. It said, all right, you win. Yada, yada, yada. And so Ashley was like, yes, I am a winner, baby. And then he's recalling his moments before where, like, the first quote-unquote crime, um, he thinks that also not saying something is a crime. If you witness a crime, not saying something is also bad. And he remembers the first time he did that. It was back at his uncle's house. Uncle Kenny. Fat Kenny, they called him. He heard some shuffling in the basement of his uncle and he went down. And then it was dark, no lights. He thought he just heard something. And so he was about to go up, but then he heard, hey, 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 kid. It was the voice of a woman and he tried to adjust his eyesight and he saw a woman there and she was like, no, 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 you're a kind boy. You're not like one of them. One of them meaning his uncle. You're not like one of them. Could you please do me a favor? Could you please get me a glass of water? Imagine nag-alangan si Batang Ashley kasi syempre, he's just a child. This was an adult. His uncle was the owner of the house. What, who did he have to follow? And then, biglang sabi na babae, please. And then that did it. He said, she said the magic word, please. And so he scrambled up upstairs to get some water. And when he returned, his uncle was guarding the door. And his uncle didn't even look panic. Okay, parang, bata lang naman to. Mabalis na manipulate to. So he said to Ashley, you know, get your brother, Lars. Punta kayo sa convenience store. Get something for yourself. My treat, okay? Go, go. And so, ano pa bang gagawin ng bata? Ashley, he went, he went back, and then he was like debating in his mind, will, should he tell the police? Because the next time he went back to his uncle's place, the floors of the basement were scrubbed. It smelled faintly of bleach. The woman was gone. But then, during that night, that same night, nagpapatayo, nagpapatawa yung uncle niya. Everything was going smoothly. Mabait naman yung uncle niya sa kanya. So he just left it. He just left it at that. And so he returned from his flashback and he's like, yes, I'm a bad guy. I'm a winner. I'm the bida. I'm the main character. And as he's doing this, his momentary distraction had, <laughs> had been an advantage to Darby because Darby left. And then he remembered, Asan na ba si Darby? Oh, the CR, the men's restroom. And so, he said, No, no, hindi ako magka-panic. Lars, my baby brother, punta ka sa labas. Abangan mo siya sa labas ng bintana. Okay? Okay. And so, Lars went out of the restroom. And now, we are back to the POV of Darby. And Darby was there sa, sa restroom, taking advantage of the distraction. And nag-practice siya, paano akitin yung bintana? Kasi medyo mataas siya. So, parang nag-go one, two, three. So, God, bumabuelo siya. And now, the third one, uh, the last attempt she did, she, ma- she managed to do it. She was gripping the windows and pulling, doing a pull-up. And as she was about to go out of the window, she could hear the crunching of ice from outside the window. The, <sighs> ni Lars. And so, she was 
before she could even panic, biglang a plastic bag went over her face and pulled her out down to the CR and now she was scrambling. She was thrashing. Ashley had a plastic bag over her face. She was losing breath, oxygen. And before she... She was about to die. Darby was about to die. That's just facts. And before she... That even took place, she remembered her mom. And she remembered her mom was all the way in Utah in surgery. And she was here in Colorado about to die. She could not let let this happen. And so, with her last breath, she sucked in a breath. The plastic came um, skin to skin uh, with her cheeks and her mouth. And she took a bite of that plastic, giving her a small hole and enough air to breathe in one last time. And pushed Ashley against the CR wall. And so, he smacked he smacked against the wall and everything dropped from his pockets and everything. Medyo unconscious siya, medyo lang, pero he could still see what was happening. And he was like, Bumabuelo si Darby. Di niya aabutin yung bintana. He, was, he wasn't moving kasi medyo inaano niya pa yung ulo niya. And then nagulat siya kasi Darby made it kasi she was practicing. Our girl practiced and she made it out the, the, the bintana. But then he was like, oh, <laughs> my baby brother. My baby brother's outside. What is this girl thinking? Okay. And so he's about to get out, go outside the CR. And obviously, Ed or Sandy heard the commotion sa CR. So he's thinking in his mind, alam ko na yung sasabihin ko. Sabihin ko na lang, ah, medyo nahilo lang ako, nahulog ako. That's, that's the sound you heard, guys. And then he opened the door, ready to tell his lie. And then who, who was in front of him? Lars, his baby brother. And Lars was like, I thought you needed help. That's why I was here. And so, asan si Darby? Darby was making her way towards the van. Okay, towards uh, Jay. And then we learned that habang nangyayari yung commotion sa CR, Jay was sawing her way, sawing her way with a little two-inch knife out the bars and she had been, she had escaped. And so when Darby made it to the van, she was smirking. And when the two guys made it outside the rest stop, they saw Darby. She was smirking. And they were like, they knew. Oh, oh no. And then they made it towards Darby. And Darby, she was feeling brave. Like, you're never gonna hurt that little girl anymore. Hmm, mm, I'm a winner. And then, before Ashley could have anger get the best of him. Because he was sake. They're rocking the sake. He was about to, mm, Darby. Like, stop siya, sabi yung, Darby. Hindi mo naintindihan yung ginawa mo. Bobo ka. And then, Darby was like, Pina yung sasabihin mo. Wala ka nang, wala ka nang, ano, child. You child abductor. And then, and explain ni Ashley. Girl, ano ba yung suot ng bata? Then, Darby remembered. It was a Pokemon shirt. A thin Pokemon shirt. And I think shorts or pajamas. I'm not sure. But, she was dressed for the weather in San Diego. Not the weather. In Colorado. The snowy blizzard. This girl was about to get frostbite in the snowstorm. And then it sunk in kay Darby. Parang, oh my... Okay, okay, calm down. And then, ginagil trip na siya ni, ano, ginagaslight na siya ni Ashley. Like, girl, mamamata yung bata, hindi dahil sa akin, dahil sa'yo, dahil sa katangahan mo. Dapat walang masasaktan dito eh. Now, now look what's gonna happen. Now look. And then he got his gun out. Get a move on. And so Darby was like, what? What are you talking about? She's not gonna come out. You two are killers. Why would she go to you? And then he's like, that's why kasama ka namin, hahanapin mo siya. Ikaw yung sumisigaw, ikaw yung sumigaw, ikaw yung maghanap sa kanya, babantayin ka lang namin. And so they were, they were guiding her towards, uh, 30 minutes sila naghahanap kay AJ outside in the snow and nothing. They reached even the back of the rest stop. And then, Darby, remember they were on a cliff, the rest stop was on a cliff. She lunged out of that cliff. She jumped from that cliff and made it and ran towards the forest. Humabal yung dalawang guys. And they were in the forest trying to find each other, like doing peekaboos, peekaboo, find me, find me. And then, in the commotion, in the chaos of it all, para na-realize ni, ano, ni Ashley what he thought was, ah, ito si Darby. She's running away, away from the rest stop. It's okay. We don't need her anymore. We'll find Jay ourselves. But then, nag-sink in yung realization na parang, okay, wait. No, no, no. Na-confused lang pala ako. She is heading towards the restroom. I rest stop. And so, at that moment, kasi may lag time na eh from the realization. And so at that moment, while they were busy realizing this, their their grave error, Darby had managed to reach the rest stop. Rest stop? I keep saying restroom. And so she was there. Ed was uh, trying to call someone with his Samsung, with his phone, and no signal. And then, and then Sandy turned around and put her pepper spray in front of Darby. He's like, not another step. Revealing someone behind her. Who was Jay? And then Sabini Jay, no, 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 she's the one who helped me. She's the one who really uh, helped me escape. And so, binabani Sandy and Pepper Spray niya. And she's like, oh, okay, come inside. And so, they were there inside the rest stop. Sandy, Ed, Darby, and Jay. And so, Darby explains everything how those two strangers, um, Ashley and Lars, were brothers and they were killers and they were coming for them. They were coming. 
And so they were trying to come up with a plan. Ano pwede natin gawin? Oh, we can use Sandy's red truck. Kasi tr- yung truck lang na to yung makaka... You had the best chance to go through the snow. And so, okay, that's, that's a good plan. That's a good plan. But then before they were gonna head out, biglang, biglang may naramdaman si Darby. Because she's a smart girl, remember? And she's like, wait, no. No, no, no. Do not take another step out this rest stop. They're out there. We're gonna get ambushed. And they're like, what? Tapos sumilip si Sandy sa bintana. And they're like, oh my God, she's right. They're out there by the cars. How did you know? Because that's what I would do if I were them. Sabi ni Darby. <laughs> and so, again, scrapping plan A, they were trying to come up with plan B. They made hot water from the thermos ng a coffee counter and coffee bar. And they said, what other weapons do we have? We have Sandy's pepper spray. What can we do? We can wait for them. Because there were three entrances in that building. The uh, window ng CR, the main door, and also the big window that uh, had the view to the parking lot. So they came up with a plan. Darby was going to wait by the CR ng window and wait for whoever was going to come in there, Ashley or Lars, and spray them and then get the gun. That was the plan. So they had a plan for that entrance. And then they just locked the main door. And so now what was left was the bintana that was a very vulnerable area and so they were stacking things to cover up that uh, section of the window because half of it was covered with snow and while they were doing that naglilipit sila kumukuha sila ng gamit-gamit Darby noticed a note sa may coffee counter and she opened it it was a note that they were they exchanged with Ashley kanina but now it had like a child's handwriting to lower area it said don't trust them and so Darby Darby was like ano naman to she looked at Jay Jay was looking at her while she was helping stack the items and Jay was like no 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 don't don't do it Darby don't trust them and she was like girl please explain to me what is going on but before before anything could be explained further Ed jumped in and he's like Jay I noticed that you had that bracelet and when was your last steroid uh, injection? And Darby was like, excuse me, backtrack, explain, explain. And so we learned that Jay has Addison's disease, which is, very, which is a very serious uh, illness. And she had to have steroid injections so she could live, basically. And it had been four days since she had been kidnapped and four days since her last shot. So she asked, ano, tinabi niya si Ezem niya? Ano, ibig sabihin ito? And it's like, he whispered to her para hindi marinig ni, ni Jay, sabi niya, later. And so she's like, okay, later. And she was stacking things in, in front of the window. And then she realized, no. Hindi later. Yun sinabi ni Ed. Sabi ni Ed. Fatal. It was fatal if they didn't get another steroid shot for Jay. She also learned that because she did not have her shots, she could not be exposed to extreme stress. Because if she did, she could go into a seizure, into a coma. She could die, basically. So there was an, a problem on top of another problem on top of another, another problem. And here was another problem in addition to that. Sandy looked through the parang furniture that was stuck in the She could see them. Uh, Ashley and Lars by the parking lot. And she said, they're doing something out there. They're doing something. Uh, uh, they're coming they're coming towards us they're coming towards us because at this point ashley already understood that darby knew darby knew that they were gonna ambush them and she's like smart girl he was like falling in love deeper with darby and he's like little brother sawa na ako dito kailangan na natin pumasok patayin na natin sila lahat get the bleach get the gasoline and so now they were headed towards the resort the rest stop resort the rest stop they were headed towards there and then Darby managed to get a hold of Jay again and had her explain what she meant with the note. And Jay was like, it's nothing. I think, I just think that Sandy looks like my bus driver in San Diego. San Diego, girl, we're in Colorado. What are you saying? Maybe it's just coincidence. Maybe it's just coincidence. But she does look like it very much. And Darby was like, no, there, there, there were too many things that she thought were just a coincidence tonight. So she had to make sure. And so while Ed was getting ready by the front door, because I, I think he had to make shift something so sh- he could like, you know, do something to Lars and Ashley when they entered. He was like busy in adrenaline mode. And Darby was like, Ed, Ed, please tell me, please tell me, where were you guys from again before you went here to the rest stop? And it was like, girl, girl, He's like, just answer the question. Just answer the question, Ed. And he's like, I'm from San Diego. Okay, what state? What state? So he was like, Carlsbad. Okay, are you happy now? I was just like, okay. Okay, it's not the same as Jay's. And then, ano pa pa kailangan mo, ha? Kasi nagigigil na si, ano, nagigigil na si Ed. Sabi niya, kailangan mo ng state? Ng zip code? Ng population? And she was like, sorry, sorry, Ed. I just had to make sure. And the last thing, <laughs> the last thing she heard was um, Ed getting angry before she turned around and got spritzed with pepper spray. By Sandy. By Sandy. And Ed was like, what the F is going on, Sandy? Why did you do that to her? And by this point, 
Lars and Ashley was out were outside by the door just listening to everything that was happening inside. And Sandy was like, uh, just listen to me. Just trust me. I can save the both of us. I can save them. And she was like waddling, waddling towards the front door. And as this was happening, Jay was pouring like water on top of Darby's eyes. Para lang, para maano naman yung sakit ng mata. And this was, she was also such a smart girl. Because while she was doing this, like pinapunasan niya yung mukha ng mata ni Darby, she was pulling her towards the CR, sa CR ng man. Ng man? The Ben CR. So dun sila nagkulong para save sila. And so at this point, Sandy, Sandy was like, oh, Ed, nagsisigawan sila ni Ed. Sabi nila, just let me do this, Ed. We're gonna be safe. Just let me. And then she unlocked, she unlocked the front door. And so in walks a surprised Ashley. He's like, oh, unlocked na pala tong pinadali mo lang yung buhay ko, Sandy. Thank you. And then Sandy greeted them with like anger. She's like, girl, akala ko ba hindi nyo sasaktan yung bata? Ano yon? Ano yung nangyari sa kamay niya? She told me everything. And Ed was there like a bystander, a confused bystander asking for an ex- explanation. Pero at the same time, he was also trying to block the path of Lars and Ashley from the CR kasi nandun sila. Sabi ni Sandy, I have the two girls. They're in the CR. Pero ano siya sabi mo? Ano na nangyari? And so we learned that Sandy, Ashley, and Lars, magkakuncha ba sila? She really was the bus driver of Jay and she was also like the person who kept an eye on Jay para mangyari yung kidnapping. And so the original plan between Sandy, Lars, and Ashley was that they would meet sa rest stop na yun because Sandy had to hand them over the keys to her storage unit. A storage unit that had the correct um, steroid injections for Jay para hindi mamatay si Jay kasi it was just a kidnapping for ransom, for money. But what Sandy did not know was that Lars and Ashley had a different plan of their own. Yes, yes, they would go to the rest stop. Yes, they would get the key. But also, they would kill Sandy. Because Sandy, Miss Little Sandy here. Okay, so the reason Sandy wanted to join sa kidnapping nito was because she wanted money. But just but not for bad reasons. Uh, she, she had good intentions, but for effed up reasons, okay? She wanted the money so she could donate it to a charity. Parang ganon. Okay, but the two men, back to the two men, they wanted to kill Sandy because the police were onto Sandy. The police had found out that it was Sandy who was the person who last saw Jay and also was the person who got the injections from the school's clinic at that and so they could not have this link to them they could not have sandy be linked to the both of them so they have to get rid of sandy so that the police couldn't make the connection to them so that was the new plan and now ed our little hero our little hero was saying you're not gonna touch them don't come near us he's like that and then ashley went and in and he showed up not with the gun but with the nail gun he's like ed 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 get out of the way my man we had fun this evening i don't want to hurt you Sandy, Sandy, tell your cousin, tell your cousin to go away, go away so I can get my Darby and my money, my little J money. And then Ed was like, fine, 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 fine. And then before he could step away, because he step away, na siya. Ashley put a nail gun under his jaw and pang, he just clamped Ed's mouth shut. And he was bleeding and Sandy screamed. And then alala bigla ni Ashley, wait, they're trapped in the restroom? the restroom with the bintana where she had already escaped and so he, he he ran through the restroom and there was no sign of darby there was no sign of jay jay and darby had stolen sandy's truck the red truck and so they did it they managed to get out of the parking and uh, past the statues and they were now in the highway in the road and akala nila they were safe you know they were driving we're safe we're safe we're far from them but then the st- the, the the truck stopped Far enough that it was still walking distance from the rest stop. And, and, and she didn't panic si Dari. But she didn't show, she didn't show Jay because hindi pa din mas trust si Jay. So bumaba siya. Chinek niya yung gulong. Bakit? Bakit? Ano nangyari sa car? There were nail guns. There were nails pala. Like pierced through the gulong. So that's why the car truck, the truck stopped. And at that same moment when the realization hits, a ping in her phone uh, went off. She checked her phone. It was a response from the police. Kanina pala nag-send through yung message niya and they're saying, find a safe space, ETA, 30 minutes. So 30 minutes. They needed to stay alive for 30 more minutes before the police could get there. And before she could celebrate and tell, and before she could celebrate, sabi bigla ni Jay, Darby! And then Darby turned around and she was face to face with the nail gun and Ashley. He had made his way over towards the truck that was just in the middle of the road. And so yun na. Dinala na sila balik, pabalik sa rest stop and he got uh, Darby's phone and Darby was like, Oh, baka makita niya yung text ng police. But then, another ping. Ala, baka nag-text ulit yung police. And then, chinek ni Ashley. Oh, Darby. Oh, it's a text from your sister, I think. Your mom died. And so now, Darby. Oh my gosh. Our hero. Her heart has just shattered. She had lost the will to fight. 
and so she was brought inside Dina she doesn't want anything to do with what happened what's happening anymore but at this moment we also learned that the reason why Ashley had to get Darby was because Darby had Ashley's keys. Remember when he had the plastic bag over Darby's head? Well, when she escaped, um, the keys to his van got snagged at Darby's... Uh, sumabit kay Darby and nakuha ni Darby yung susi. So now, without that key, they had no means of escape. So they needed Darby. And so Darby was there and they were asking, Where is my keys, girl? Where is that? Where is it? She had thrown it. She had thrown it before they had made their escape with the truck, with Sandy's truck. She tossed it out of the Bintana sa CR and then they exited the CR and went to the truck. That's what happened. And so Darby was like, I don't want to tell you. I can't tell you because if I tell you, you're still going to kill us. Duh. And then, medyo napupuno na si Ashley. Si Maring Ashley. And so si Ashley, remember circle time? Remember circle time when he shared that he had a fear of door hinges? Well, at some point that evening, Darby had made fun of him from his, for his fear of door hinges. And he remembered that. And so sabi niya, Darby, nalala mo nung inasar mo ko? Sabi mo, I was a, piss, a pussy for, you know, being scared of door hinges. <laughs> Darby was like, yeah. Come, come here, come here, come here, come here. So they, she, he pulled Darby towards the janitor's closet. Sabi niya, lagay mo yung kamay mo dyan, lagay mo. Lagay mo with the nail gun. Like, like, you know, forcing her. And so she put it. And then he shut the door. And then naipit yung pinky ni Darby. And she, she screamed. She screamed so hard. The pain was so intense. Na medyo na unconscious siya. And so sinasampa siya ni Ashley. Sabi niya, wake up. Wake up, Darby. I need you to tell me where my keys are. Are you gonna speak now? Darby wasn't going anywhere because her fingers were still there. Sa door. Hindi pa rin open ni Ashley. Sabi ni Ashley, hindi ka naman nila alis dyan eh. So let me do what I came here to do. So he went towards Sandy, who they were supposed to kill talaga that night. And they killed her. And the way they killed Sandy was, nakatapa sa floor si Sandy. And on top of her was Ashley. And Ashley had pulled her head back so intensely that her neck cracked. Just cracked open. That is how morbid the description was. And then now, so now Sandy is dead. Now we have Ed. Ed was there. He couldn't speak, so he just looked at Darby in his eyes, pleading at Darby to tell him what he, they needed to know. And Ashley was there with the nail gun again. Sabi niya, okay, magsalita ka na, Darbs. Darbs, magsalita ka na kasi mamatay na to si Ed and it's gonna be your fault again. Not mine. Yours. You have the option here to choose. And Darby was like, oh, fine, fine. It's out there sa bintana. Check mo doon. Hindi ko alam kung saan. Tinapon ko lang. And then Ashley was like, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for cooperating. And then, pang, he killed Ed. And then he said to his baby brother, Lars was there like a security guard, you know, with the pistol. Sabi niya, baby brother, bantay mo sala and do what you need to do, okay? I'm gonna check to see if what this bish says is correct. And so he went out. He went outside towards the back of the building again. And Lars, he magically did what he was supposed to do, which is he dumped um, gasoline everywhere on top of Sandy's body, on top of Ed's. He cleaned the doorknobs and places where there would be fingerprints. But even if the place um, burned the ground, there would still be no traces of them there, evidence of them there and so jay was watching all of this come on jay she was just watching all of this and then she went towards darby who was still stuck by the door darby please 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 fight for us please fight for us but we can get out of here you're our only hope and darby was like girl 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 and then suddenly like the spirit of her dead mom parang she remembered her mom just died and everything and she's like no i'm gonna fight i'm gonna fight for my mom and everything and for jay And so they hatched a plan. We were not told what that plan is, but then we are shown in the next couple of sequences. So after Lars was finished dumping gasoline and doing the bleach thing, he saw Darby and Darby was looking at him intensely, so mad, like she didn't give an F anymore. She was just staring at him. And Lars was very awkward, just socially awkward. And he was not, he was extremely uncomfortable with the extreme eye contact Darby was giving, so much so that he lost sight of Jay and Jay. Our little savior had turned the lights off so buildings hello and so it was all black and darkness and he's like ashley ashley he was still holding the gun ashley can i kill her now he's like that and before anything else could happen darby had jumped on lars and they were now fighting for the pistol and everything and it was chaotic and they were thrashing and everything so what darby did was she had pulled her hand out of the door the closed door and was now pinkyless she was pinkyless okay pinkyless and fighting for the gun and she had won but ashley didn't know that three shots had gone out from the building and then he heard it from the back of the building and he's like oh, little brother sabi ko wag niya patayin si darby ako papatay kay darby oh well and then he nakita niya yung susi and then bumalik na siya sa harap And he was jiggling the doorknob. He's like, Lars, Lars, wuk sama to, wuk sama to. 
It was the voice of Darby. Seventy Darby. Little brother can come to the door right now. Little brother is dead. And so now, we have a psychotic Ashley. Even more psychotic now with the death of his brother. And so he's like, I'm gonna kill you, Darby. I love you, but I'm gonna kill you. We could have been together, Darby. Could have been boyfriend, girlfriend, Darby. And he was just shooting, shooting nails inside. But Darby had gotten the pistol of Lars. And Ashley knew that there were no, no more bullets inside. Because he heard the three shots, Deba. So there were no more bullets. But he didn't know that Darby had one more bullet that Jay had given her the evening, the earlier this evening. And so she put that bullet inside and she was like about to pu she put the, pull the trigger. But then she remembered there was gasoline everywhere, everywhere. If she shot that, the whole building would catch on fire. She remembered Jay who could not get stressed and they were hiding from the nails that Ashley was shooting inside the building. But then our smart little Darby hatched another plan. So now we're in the POV of Ashley. You're shooting inside, shooting inside. And then he finally got inside. He finally got inside the, the rest stop. And then he's finding them. Finding them. Looking to the right. Looking to the left. Found the body of his baby brother. Getting more angry. But then he heard it like a, a ting, a ting. A sound like that from behind. And he turned around. And he's like, where are they? And then he saw a toaster. A toaster jammed with tissues. Just jammed with tissues. And then that was the ping he heard before the whole building exploded. And now we are brought back to the POV of Jay and Darby, who are walking in the snow away from the burning building. They had escaped from the window of the CR again. And so Jay was like, is he finally dead? And Darby was like, no. If I know Ashley, it would take more than a burning building to kill that man. It would take me shooting his face at point blank to make sure he was dead. And so they were walking, they were tired, their body was aching, they were bleeding. And... At this point, medyo umaga na, okay? Medyo may araw na. And that was the time where the snowplows would come out and just get the snow out of the way. And so they saw the snowplow and they were so excited. Jay was so excited. Jay turned around to, to like yell hooray kay Darby. And she saw something. She said, Darby, he's following us. And Darby turned around to see a very badly burnt Ashley walking towards them. Fire burning in the background like Charlie's Angels. And she was like, girl... Ayoko na, pagod na ako. This has to end. This has to end. Jay, punta ka na doon sa snowplow. Punta ka na. Iwanan mo na ako dito. Okay? Ako na bahala dito. Ako na. And then from Ashley's perspective, he could see the two girls hugging. And they were like, may time pa kayo makapyakap dyan? Mga atang-atang ako yung dyan? And then they separated their ways. And then Darby, he noticed, was coming towards him. And he's like, well, Ganto ba ka bobo yung girl na to? Oh my gosh. Sige. Okay. Padali yung buhay ko. Come here, girl. With the nail gun in his hand. And then he pointed his nail gun towards Darby. From afar, from a distance away. He pointed it and then it clicked. And then it's... The nail gun's battery was out. Lobat na si loko. And it was like, oh, it's okay. I can strangle her. I can I can use my hands. Go the traditional way. And then he was about to come closer. But then he, he saw the glint of metal in Darby's hands. It was his baby brother's pistol. And he was like, no, no, I heard the shots. Three shots. It's supposed to be empty right now. But why is she walking towards me so fiercely, so bravely, so without an F in the world? He knew that she wasn't bluffing. She had somehow found, magically found another bullet and he was coming for her. And so he made it to his van and he was looking frantically for the extra battery that he had in the front seat. And as he was looking and looking around, suddenly he felt a chill up his spine and he knew he knew that if he turned around at that exact moment, Darby would be there standing. And so he turned around, ready for Darby. And Darby was there with the gun pointed in his face, his baby brother's gun. But before Darby could click the trigger, tinanong niya si Ashley, Besh, ano ba? Ano bang balak niyo sa batang to kay Jay? Wala ni si Sandy. Hindi na kayo pwede mag-kidnap for ransom. So why don't you just let this little girl go? And Ashley, was like, he, he wanted to laugh. So, girl, patayin mo na lang ako kung, kung ganito. Pero sige, sige. If you want me to live longer, I'll answer your question. We were gonna give her to my Uncle Kenny. Fat Kenny. He promised me big bucks for this little girl. And I know, Darby, I promise you, it wasn't gonna be a sex thing. But it is now 100% a sex thing. He is a truck driver. He has truck driving friends. Whatever they're gonna, go, gonna do to that little girl is none of my business. But that's what's happening. That's the plan. And Darby... Darby's rage, she, her blood was boiling. She was about to click that trigger and Ashley noticed. He closed his eyes, but then he heard the bang. But he never thought he would be alive to hear the bang ng gun. So he opened his eyes and then he checked his body and then he saw Darby still standing, still pointing the gun at his face. But then slowly, a pool of blood had suddenly formed in her chest, her chesticles. And then slowly, 
Darby dropped to the ground, revealing a police officer behind them. It turns out Darby had just been shot by an officer who thought that she was the suspect and that Ashley was the victim. And Ashley could not believe his luck. So sabi ng officer kay Darby, drop the gun. Eh, na-drop na ni Darby kasi nabaril niya si Darby. And then after that, Darby was on the ground, on the floor, on the ice. Sabi naman ng officer kay Ashley, sir, we need your hands up. And so Ashley, diba, he was looking for the battery behind his hands, diba? And sabi niya, oh, you need to see my hands. He killed the officer with the nail gun that he had just placed the battery, the new battery in. And so Ashley, lumakay na naman yung ulo ni Ashley. Kasi all of these things has happened to him and he still managed to be alive. The explosion, okay, the gun pointed at him, the officer killing Darby. He just felt so alive. And now Jay, during this time, during all of this chaos, Jay had managed to reach the man um, using the snowplow. Then after all this, we're back to the present. We're back to... Ashley finding the man who owned the snowplow and he found him and the snowplow guy was like don't kill me don't kill me he was he was crawling on the floor crawling back on his when on his hands and Ashley fired the nail gun I think it, it, it hit his either his his arm or his leg and before he could finish off the guy again Ashley felt a chill in his spine and he turned around and it was Jaybird Jaybird with Lars's pistol pointed at him and he wanted to laugh seeing Jay parang struggling with the weight of the gun. But then she, she pulled the trigger and then he closed his eyes again. But then, but then still he was able to hear the gunshot again. So he opened his eyes, checked down at his body. There was no blood. There was no blood. And then he looked at Jay who looked so concerned. He wanted to laugh kasi ang lapit-lapit niya na. Hindi pa siya mabaril maayos. And then sinabi niya. But then the words came out as, I feel the rest of you put the... And then he dropped down to the, gu- to the floor. And Jay just looked at him like, it's over now. Slowly, blood was pooling out of his chest and on the ground, and he was on the floor, and he was dead. And so Jay, earlier, after she met with the snowplow guy, she went back to Darby, and then she was greeted with the sight of Darby's body in a pool of blood, got the pistol from Darby, raced back to Ashley, and then killed him. And now she was racing back to Darby and to check up on her. She was still alive. And Darby, Darby was like moaning and everything. And she said, Darby, don't die. Don't die. We can get help. We're going to get help. And Darby, and Darby reached for a pen in her pocket. And she was writing an address and a name. The name of Ashley's uncle and his address. And she said, it's over now. If anything happens to you, the police are going to find my body. They're going to find this address and they're going to find you. It's over now. So fast forward a few months and the police, they find Jay. They found the dead bodies, the burning building. And unfortunately, not long after that, Jay had slipped into a coma. Because of all the stress and the lack of steroid shots that she was not getting. And now, um, a few months after that, she had gotten better. And her parents, they're telling Jay that um, we want to see the person who saved our daughter's life. And so now, at this moment, at present, they were in a cemetery. And Jay's parents um, put a hand over her shoulder and said... It's okay, sweetie. Take your time. We'll be right here. And so they leave Jay. And Jay stares at the tombstone and she thinks to herself, this is the first time I've learned the last name of my hero. And she looks to Darby to her left and says, "Um, are you okay? Is everything going to be all right? And Darby, she looks to Jay, looks back at the tombstone. It was her mother's tombstone. It was her mother's grave. They were there just paying their respects. And Darby likes saying her final goodbye to her mom. And Darby... She says, yes, everything's going to be okay. And and since then, the two girls had formed an incredible friendship, an incredible bond that could not be separated. And that, my friends, is the story of No Exit. And grabe, no, pinapakinggan ko yung audiobook. Ang galing ng narrator. And sana I was just at least 1% as good as her telling this story, retelling this story to you guys. But yeah, again, I really, really highly recommend the audiobook if you want to listen to this story. What were your thoughts? Naloko ba kayo ni Ashley? Nagustuhan niyo na ano niya makagad si Lars? And did you think that Ashley was suspicious from the get-go? Also, ang galing na lang pagsulat ng author sa dulo kasi you think, it made you think that Darby died. But really, it was just her mom. Ang galing ng ending. It's just another another twist that you did not expect. Ang dami actually, ang daming twist ng story nito. Very, it, it grabs you. It grabs you. And that is it, you guys. That is today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed today's story. And if you have any stories you'd like to share of your own or any stories you want me to talk about, please email us at crispycrimepodcast at gmail.com. And if you want to see the faces behind the beautiful voices you're hearing right now, please check out our YouTube channel at Crispy Crime. I will see you on my next one, guys. Stay kind. Stay safe. Bye-bye.